If I was tasked with assassinating a race car driver, my strategy would be to just kill time until the inevitable fiery crash that takes the lives of all southern race drivers sooner or later. Why expend unnecessary energy? I don't think that actually happens to every race car driver, brother. Oh? Can you think of any drivers who have survived more than 10 years on the circuit? I... Well, in fairness, no, but I don't actually watch racing either. There's no shame in it. Not everyone has the stomach for that level of blood sport. Personally, I haven't been able to bring myself to tune in a competitive ping pong match since Reed vs. Quan back in 1992. That wasn't what I was... What happened in the ping pong match? You never heard about it? Some guy in the stand threw a boot at the back of Stanford Reed's head, knocked his eyeball clean out. You're joking. The really gruesome part was that they didn't stop the match until six minutes later. Nobody noticed that the actual ball had long since rolled off the table. Ooh, brother. On that general theme, given the nature of Agent 47's work, don't you find it strange that the Hitman games are essentially bloodless? I mean, the whole series is about killing people. Well, professionalism, brother. If you hire an assassin, you want them to get in, do the job, and get out. Not to hang around and make sculptures out of the corpses. That's why Leatherface never turned pro. Well, granted, but even so, it's not as if Agent 47 has ever shied away from the more creative methods of target disposition. He'll throw you into a jet engine or drop a safe on your head, but it never seems to result in the shower of blood and viscera that would result if you or I attempted such a thing. How is he pulling it off? Is he buying the safe from the Acme Corporation? Are you saying you want more gore in the Hitman games, brother? Uh, well, I'm not sure, honestly. It just seems like we're missing a layer of realism. That layer of realism being trying to sneak out of a fancy dinner party with one of your host's eyeballs drying on the sleeve of your dinner jacket like a stray tomato seed. You don't have to put it like that. I'm just saying maybe it would add an extra layer of strategy if you had to factor in cleanup times. The game already has you hiding bodies and swapping outfits. What else would you be doing? Well, like if Agent 47 had to sneak through hostile territory with a mop and bucket set before anyone in the mansion wandered into the bedroom and looked at the ceiling. At the ceiling? People explode sometimes, brother. There's a lot of history backing me up on this. Why censor it? I think the unspoken guidelines for the Hitman series is that the kills themselves can be implied to be as gruesome as the developers want. They just can't show splattered entrails or the like. I disagree, Chan. I can think of several kills too gruesome for the Hitman series to actually implement. For instance, you'll never see Agent 47 amputate a man's leg and then beat him to death with it. That's on-screen gore, brother. That's a breach of etiquette. Oh, right. Okay, how about Agent 47 poisons his target's food, inducing bathroom death? That's not new. Agent 47 poisons people all the time. No, I mean specifically fatal diarrhea. Camera just outside the bathroom stall, we hear everything. Would they have the courage to depict death poop? What is wrong with you, brother? You're just angry at being proven wrong. Or how about this one? Agent 47 poses as a doctor, sews a sedated wolverine into his target's abdominal cavity, then he wakes him up as him engaged in vigorous aerobic exercise, maybe sends him to a really loud discotheque. Everything's fine until... Sure, people say they want creativity in games.